Roop Raj, Fox 2 Detroit, to talk about this story here. Roop, uh, this, was, this was stunning, to say the least. You know, even the attorney general herself, Dana Nessel, said she didn't see this one coming. I had the chance to reach out to her just about an hour ago via text, and we were just kind of chatting about how surprising this was, uh, even for her, having, of course, been, uh, you know, in law enforcement for a really long time. Uh, this type of thing still kind of shakes people, and for good reason. It was so unexpected. What they did expect to happen today was a 215 arraignment, uh, and it was supposed to be uh, a peaceful uh, a, a peaceful turning of himself in that was supposed to happen right before 215 when they expected to have him at the sheriff's deputy uh, at the sheriff's department and take him into custody uh, they couldn't find him that's when they went on the search so again now keep this in mind uh, it's about noon or so or one o'clock and they're still looking for him to turn himself into the sheriff's department uh, near Lansing Michigan and uh, they discovered of course that he was nowhere to be found they went to his home from there they were not able to find him there uh, someone else of course then found uh, apparently him inside of his car outside of a rest area in a town called Grand Ledge, which is not far from Lansing. Uh, and so it was a pretty sad thing for a lot of people, but still uh, the sad part of this entire case, this entire story was what they were trying to adjudicate, Andrew, which was the fact that this man was uh, accused and they had 24 charges levied against him, uh, more than 20 counts. Uh, f the 24 felonies, 20 counts of human trafficking. Uh, there was also uh, racketeering, criminal sexual conduct that they accused him of actually uh, assaulting both physically and emotionally a young girl under the age of 16, and then lying to the police about what he may have known about when it came to Larry Nasser. That name, of course, synonymous with uh, the person who was accused and charged with uh, abusing hundreds upon hundreds of young women as part of the USA Gymnastics program. And so Larry Nasser and this man, we're talking about Mr. Geddert, they worked together at the gym that Geddert owned. And apparently the, the charge here was that, look, you knew about what was going on with Larry Nasser and you didn't do anything to stop it. Andrew? One of the uh, main questions that I have, Rube, for you is uh, essentially how how long has it been since Geddert has you know trained young gymnasts? It seems like U.S. gymnastics uh, and the Olympic team has just been through the ringer with all of these scandals. But uh, kind of give us a sense of that. That in 2018, when the trial was going on and the sentencing of Larry Nassar was happening, uh, Geddert's name came up a few times in that sentencing memo. And one of the things that happened right away was when they mentioned Geddert in the sentencing for Larry Nassar in 2018, right away he stepped down and was no longer a part of that very gym, Twist Stars Gym. Uh, which is near Lansing, Michigan. So he immediately stepped down and his wife, Catherine, took over. Uh, but there was an interesting quote that we heard from one of the victims saying, John broke us uh, and Larry was there to put us back together. She described the symbiotic relationship that John and Larry had where one would kind of tear someone down while the other one built them up all for their own benefit. But again, it was 2018 when he finally stepped down. And by the way, we should mention just recently, that entire gym, Twist Stars, was completely renamed and sold to new ownership by the wife, Catherine, who, um, as you know now, is the wife of John Getter, the man who took his life today. And Rup, what, what is next uh, in this case? Is it essentially over? Are there any more uh, charges going to be filed for anyone else? Uh, are there any more defendants? Uh, what's, what's the next step for this case? to this gym was Catherine Geddard, who is the wife of John Geddard. We can tell you uh, in, in all clarity and, and in all transparency that she is not at all a suspect in any of these cases. Uh, she has not been thought of to be complicit in any of these cases either. So there are no further charges that are being levied or being planned at this time from the Attorney General's office. But I can tell you that this is far from over for the victims. We had the chance to catch up with two of the victims uh, just in the last few hours, and we actually broke the news to them about Mr. Geddard's death. Uh, they were shocked. They said they were sad for Catherine, the wife, but they still say this is not over for them. The pain that they still feel as now young adults who have moved on in their lives, uh, hard to leave this part of it behind them. And yes, even with this, uh, this suicide that we're talking about today of the 63-year-old gym owner, uh, this does not put closure to the pain that so many of these young ladies have felt. All right, Fox 2's Roop Raj live for us there in Detroit to break down what a tragic story. I'm sure uh, many of our viewers would know the names of those prominent U.S. gymnasts uh, who were abused at the hands of both Nasser and, and Getter. Roop, good to talk to you as always. You bet.
Right now, we do want to go out to uh, Lakewood, California, and that's where the uh, L.A. County Sheriff's deputy was killed early today in a, in a crash in the Lakewood area. Uh, the crash happened about 9 a.m., and uh, at the moment, it just wrapped up, uh, but they held uh, an update on that terrible, terrible situation. So we're going to play that out for you right now.